Salutations. Salutations from all points. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It's Travi again. Um, been wanting to make a couple videos today. It's just been busy. And then I started watching stuff, and uh, it's kind of compelling me. It's, it's pulling me away from the ideas I had, so I'm, I just got to roll with it. So, come on in. Fucking, oh, Pussifer's here. So, drugs, okay? And your will. Uh, um, there seems to be a lot of either confusion or debate on the subject. And I feel like we're kind of past that at this point. Like, we're being willfully ignorant on certain subjects. Because people have done the legwork. Um, some of us in past lives have spent, you know, years working this shit out. And what? And to touch on that, I um, I do believe in the idea of recurrence. Um, reincarnation is, is a cool idea, um, but there's also the idea of um, human beings, like the, as were the emergent property of uh, the pattern, that certain people are like the same type of flower. So every year. In the garden, certain flowers will come, but it's never the same flower that blooms. Uh, just so people don't, you know, hang on certain words of mine. Uh, uh, the only thing I believe is that beliefs are dangerous and that they end up leading people to stop thinking about things wholly. Um, when I talk about creation, myths, and stuff, or stories of, even when I say this is what, you know, I like to believe, or if I use the word believe, they're, they're, what I'm using it as a convention, you know, it, it's just easier to say that than to not, um, or to have to explain myself, but um, the idea of God being aliens, and it, it, it just adds layer to the story, and as storytellers and map makers, I think it's important for us that if we're going to be creative at all, it has to be in our belief systems and structures that we let loose on society, because, eh, anyway, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. What does this mean? Well, a lot of people like to say, do what thou want. You know, kind of thing. So, I do what I want because that's my will. But it's confusing. You're, you're misinterpreting the, the thou. And the wilt. Your will is not your current desire. Your will is your the specific purpose that the tool of your physical body was built to do. You're here for a certain task. Some people are just here to make kids. Um, this was like a big thing I was thinking about earlier when I was uh, making some Soul Reaver videos. Um, Legacy of Cain stuff. Uh, there's a particular part, it was when I was talking about the Reaver being a phallic symbol, and um, um, it was when Cain was killing Raziel, and Raziel was willingly giving up his, you know, he was putting his spiritual Reaver into him, while Cain's Reaver was in him, and it was like this whole, you know, total bro moment. <laughs> But uh, I thought about the point in the game when Raziel resisted killing Cain in the chapel of William, in William's chapel, and Soul Reaver 2, because his whole, the Reaver that he was holding, which is himself, his spirit, um, bound in there, that's lived the cycle over and over again, all it wants to do is drive into Cain. You can see it moving his hand around. 
and you got to look at your sexual desire like that. Um, especially if recurrence is a thing. Uh, it means that when you are in contact with the person that you say uh, a million times have had children with, say in this cycle, say, say Rust Cole is right in um, True Detectives, Nietzsche, all that. We repeat the same life over and over again. You know, there's nothing you can do. You're trapped here. So when you get to these moments in life that you've done over and over and over again, there's the this you are like overcome with emotion that you know uh surely i shall come quickly <laughs> because in that moment uh it's it's like your purpose is being um done your will is being done i had this strange feeling that like raziel i denied my true calling with uh, a particular wom woman that I was with when I was younger, this girl, uh, and it was it it started the whole dualities thing in me where I and this is getting back into drugs, I promise. Uh, I grew up with um this kind of infatuation with this one girl, but it, it's mainly because m m all my friends were sleeping with her. It was like she was this physical representation of the desire of all my friends, okay? And because of my nature, I was just best friends with her, too. Like, she wasn't any less of a friend than the other, like, the guys were in, in the group. So... It got to be that everybody would be like, oh, well, Travi loves her, you know, and I did, but it took me a long time to realize that I loved her like I love Chris or JD or Reggie, you know, it's like, um, guys have this infatuation with other guys, um, on an intellectual level that can sometimes build them up sexually but it's like you're not going to just start blowing your best friend it's like um it, it's just this synergy but i had this with this girl and i thought like um well okay so i'm the masculine form of this representation the soul okay but i am sort of in some ways like feminine in nature okay she was a female so that was like masculine in nature so it was like we could really it seemed like we were two halves um and it you know it kind of led to the delusion that of oh, the one kind of shit but it, it mainly had to do with like our how things lined up like you're into poetry i'm into poetry and not just that like we write we would write our own stuff um and music and blah 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 but then i met mora and uh it was like i had to fight the urge you see what i'm i mean like uh like, with her, I was worried about having a kid. Like, most... Like, I, I haven't been with a lot of girls, but let's just say condoms aren't my favorite thing. <laughs> uh, but with her, I was always, like, scared. Because, like, I felt like it was... Like, it could only lead to a kid with her. I, I don't understand. I don't know how else to describe it. Um... And that relationship got fucked up over the ver that that these emotions because I think she felt it too like this drive because you know it was definitely palpable but um before I got with her I had not rejected women outright but drugs were my main 
um, source of altering my consciousness. And that's what I want to talk about. Will and and drugs for, uh, is, is the main like section I want to get into. Is that your consciousness is um, your intelligence. It's the way it is for you to perform your will. Like learning anything that doesn't help you do what you're supposed to do is is just a waste of time and, and will confuse you and lead to like second guessing. Um, the um, always reliable diary of a drug fiend has so much on this topic that it, it was hard for me to, to like pull any one quote or talk about anything um, I was just going to start off reading uh, Thirst poem but uh, it's actually very specific to the book itself and only sections of it apply to the situation I want to get into but um, the, the way I talk on Facebook and when I post things and the reason I'm always quoting the book of the law is because I'm trying to remind me and anyone I'm talking to that our interactions are super flawless only to the point that it helps us do our will so like in our orbits we get pulled into each other's gravities um but how much attention you give to anyone else's pull um depends on the work you do i mean uh like a comet flying through space it is drawn really easily to anything that has gravity but as a star your um path is your own and you know i know that there's a lot more um work done with us understanding better about space and I also want to talk about that first or uh, that the book of the law stuff where every man and every woman is a star but I'm just trying to focus here okay um, the snake that giveth knowledge and delight and bright glory okay the, the, this is the key of what I'm getting at here um, here uh, just for reference I am the snake that giveth knowledge and delight and bright glory, and stir the hearts of men with drunkenness. To worship me take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet, and be drunk thereof. They shall not harm ye at all. It is a lie, this folly against self. The exposure of innocence is a lie. Be strong, O oh man. Lust. Enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any god shall deny thee for this. <sighs> okay. What does that mean? Well, it means that the sacrament, the fruit of the gods, is and has always been drugs. Um, a lot of people, Alex, in, in, in general, in, as an example, rather... Um, he and the Cosm crew have grasped onto this very uh, profoundly and are very honest about it. Um, a lot of people are afraid to talk about drug use in our culture, um, even and often especially psychedelics, because uh, as opposed to you being addicted and having a disease psychedelics are viewed more as choice oriented um cycles or processes but all drugs are initiation tools into certain mysteries now as i said before depending on your work there's no need for you to be in initiated into every mystery in life okay so uh, as tools, drugs can help focus the mind 
or disassociate the mind. You can fuel your ego or dissolve your ego with the aid of drugs. The way to do the work properly is to know that the ego and your body will deceive you if addiction takes hold. Um, when addiction takes hold, especially if you're using certain drugs like heroin or cocaine. Um, there's just no avoiding it. it. It's the nature of the beast. Um, and this is because, like the Industrial Revolution has changed the way we need fuel to get our machines running. Uh, we, we, we have purified our fuel to the point where we can shoot things to space. Okay, we have done the same thing with chemical compounds found in plants that ancients would use in rituals um, or in their daily lives, um, like coca leaves, walking with coca leaves chewing on them to get that little bit of boost throughout the day. Um, opium or poppy, you know, um, even opium. But I mean, like, the, the poppy plant just bleeds that stuff out so just having it consuming it you you get the you get the initiatory effects of the drug okay but i guess like with psychedelics and everything people realize that um the higher the dose the more heroic the dose the more assured the ritual would be to success okay now, i know it's hard to understand how can heroin be involved in any type of like process to initiate through initiation but uh it's it's that point of view that lets people that have gone through it see that you are uninitiated okay uh it's just how every junkie can see another junkie across the room uh clean or not uh but especially if somebody's on something once you've done certain drugs you can always see it in the other person and this is because of the idea gods or IDGs, I might sometimes say, but these are ideas that our brains pull in. Our brains are receivers, okay? You're in the fucking maze of just information. What you think, the emotions you feel, will actually pull thoughts and ideas to you, okay? They will swarm you like fucking flies. These are the things I call idea gods. I don't mean literal gods. I'm not trying to say that. Um, anyway, it, 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 it's just the it's it's for my writing and some of my books that I'm writing, but it, it's also a nod to the fact that there's these theories that when our brain wasn't fully developed. We heard our subconscious or conscious mind as deities, um, which I, I believe has been unproven. But the theory works very well in practice, even to this day. Because people, especially on drugs, can become possessed by ideas. I mean, you're seeing it on the streets now. That, that a few ideas can burn a fucking city to the ground. So... It's your job to figure out what your will is. Um, to figure out your will, um, Crawley uh, likes to say, obtain the knowledge and conversation of your holy guardian angel, mainly as an absurd statement, but it's simply talking about transcending your ego to the part of you that does not lie to you like you know that ruthless part that 
doesn't just say bad things to put you down, but just says the truth, okay? Um, you need to get in touch with this part of yourself and begin a dialogue to see what it is you really like doing. Um, what it is you feel compelled to do if you don't even like doing it. Um, because sometimes our will is... Uh, hard to realize and that's why we go into all of these weird painful experiences because we look at our will and it's like oh that's painful and we do this not knowing if we were actually doing our will you would feel happy about it like you just like the initiation of addicts into the understanding of like this world you know, uh, the, the, the drug culture, like once you're initiated into it, you're in kind of thing. It, it, it works with all of that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm rambling guys, but, um, it's important that you're not afraid to risk, um, everything to be yourself. Um, right here, ye are against the people, O oh my chosen, I am the secret serpent coiled about to spring, in my coiling there is joy, if I lift up my head, I and my new are one, if I droop down my head and shoot forth venom, then is the rapture of the earth, and I and the earth are one, there is a great danger in me, for who doth not understand these runes shall make a great miss he shall fall down into the pit called because and there he shall perish with the dogs of reason now a curse upon because and his kin may because be accursed forever if will stops and cries why invoking because then will stops and does not if power asks why then is power weakness. Also, reason is a lie, for there is a factor infinite and unknown, and all their words are skew wise. Enough of because, be he damned for a dog. But ye, O oh my people, rise up and awake. Let the rituals be rightly performed with joy and beauty. There are rituals of the elements and feasts of the times. A feast for the night, for the first night of the prophet and his bride. A feast for the three days of the writing of the book of the law. A feast for Tahiti and the child of the prophet. Secret, O oh prophet. A feast for the supreme ritual and a feast for the equinox of the gods. A feast for fire and a feast for water. A feast for life and a greater feast for death, a feast every day in your hearts in the joy of my rapture, a feast every night unto me, and the pleasure of uttermost delight. Hi, feast, rejoice, there is no dread hereafter. There is the dissolution and eternal ecstasy in the kisses of new. There is death for the dogs. Dost thou fail? Art thou sorry? Is fear in thine heart? Where I am, these are not. Pity not the fallen, I never knew them. I am not for them, I console not. I hate the consoled and the consoler. I am unique and conqueror. I am not of the slaves that perish, be they damned and dead. Amen. This is of the four. There is a fifth who is invisible, and therein am I as a babe in an egg. Get the gist. Had it. Okay. To achieve had it is to understand your will. Had he had you are the center in the infinite circumference you're the point okay now you are 
a temporal point in space and time. That's how this game works. Like, timeless eternity, this multitude would mean nothing without this death rattle of a world we have here. Um, uh, oh, man. Oh, Philip K. Dick. Yeah. So, Vallis, the, the hibernation of the Logos that he claims was buried in Nagam, that was pulled up with uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, so, Vallis, or Barbellith, these are living intelligence living information that used to be a part of all of mankind it was just part of the system what they call the fall was our loss of that and it, it more than likely has to do with the Kali Yuga cycle we're in as in there may be events that we could call the cause of the fall but this is just the natural progression of the world we are in a forgetful drug-induced state right now well we have a tendency towards addiction but the fact that people are talking about the oh the monolith also was something I'm mean, gonna I wanna try to make videos of it. I just need a better camera because I'm I have this fucking cool idea where it's like how to guide and it'll be control the monolith how to guide. So at the end of Space Odyssey well, two thousand one, you know, our our little space guy looks at the camera and what should happen, what I want to do is then when he does that, it's like he's changing the channel, you know what I mean, he grabs his Xbox controller or whatever, and then you'll see, I'll make a video but um, th this is what drugs are, th this is what I'm saying drugs do they will give you a quick access to any given intelligence that is Kabbalistically bound to that drug now clearly Psychedelics are supernal in nature. They they transcend the abyss. They are often just squeegee clean your third eye right up. I mean that's the that's the appeal of them. Um but to descend into the, like the clippeth and to even work with lower Sephiroth. Um, certain drugs can give you a quick um, uh, they're basically like tutors if they're working on a subject. Like they'll, You'll be getting all these ideas but they're being generated by the drug in your head. The IDGs are being attracted to the drug composition um i actually have a uh, a neighbor um a girl i grew up with that's been on some uh like uh, some meth for a while it's been pretty rough uh, she's been having these very far out experiences of being in purgatory uh like a fire shit um she sees her brother um she has been diagnosed schizophrenic but because of the work I'm involved in spiritually, like a lot of these people are drawn to me because I, they hear me valid, like they see me sometimes validating maybe some of their experiences because um, I, I'm not here to say you know it's your fucking retarded, fucked up brain. What it is is they can't not focus on spiritual aspects of the world, which gives them a disadvantage in the physical world. Um, but this is the, the shit these people are going through. Drug addicts, uh, people that are burned out on drugs. These are the same things that shamans and other um, practicers, uh, like psychonauts alike, 
have done to themselves. It's just, as a culture, we are very uneducated on what the end result of taking a drug is. Um, I like in The Matrix how the red pill, blue pill, it's like, this binds you to this world, this frees you from that world. Uh, I, of course, would have taken both. Uh, purple was my favorite color anyway. But these concepts need to be further instilled. Like, when I grew up, drugs are bad, okay? That was just it. So, my generation and the generations before me in, like, 99, I think, was my beginning of hard drugs. Uh, I, I The year I showed up was almost exactly the same year I ate acid. I think I was 16, 15 or 16 at the time. So... For as long as I've done psychedelics, I have done opioids, um, crack. I mean, if, if you guys have any questions about drug use, or maybe I'll tell some stories about some shit then, but I need you to understand that this is dangerous work, though. The, the gifts given aren't given without sacrifice. You're, you're, you're serving a, an idea, God, that loves you, but doesn't care if you live or die. Because to it, death is just part of the cycle. Um, it teaches you very similar things LSD and psychedelics do, but in a very different way. Um... The whole Remember to Breathe song, um, the body has needs, don't forget to breathe, that's very, that very much makes me think of a lot of people who OD and stuff, and, and this is why, fucking fentanyl guys, I mean, this is why I don't do heroin anymore, uh, cause, y it's like, y y you just got, you guys couldn't stop, now like, Anybody that does, knows the game, knows that shit, has always been stepped on. It's always been diluted by the time it gets to anybody. So, like, the fact that they need to put the spetinol in it to make it pure enough so people can get high, it's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's clearly a cheap thing, a, a, a money thing, because you could put fentanyl, a, a drop of fentanyl, on a power of just fucking vitamin B or some shit. Not even heroin. You're not even going to cut it with a dope. You can just have it in a pile. And it would wreck you the way that amount of heroin would. But the LD lethal dose of fentanyl is exceedingly high. Like why this is even a drug that we thought we needed to create it is boggles the mind. Because... It's not like opioids do serious damage on your liver when you're taking them. It's, it's often the Tylenols and the things that, like in Percocet and Vicodin, people take a lot of them. It's like the NSAIDs and stuff build up and fuck their stomach up. But like, I know that it started out as patches. Fentanyl started out as patches. Believe me, man, I've seen the people cut them open and shit. I know all about it. I mean, I know it's for this extreme pain that these people have. But it's become so readily available to dealers man it just ruined the whole fucking scene man like the, the last friend that died a few years ago that not my last friend but the, the last friend who died a few years ago he did a shot man and it was like it was just in his arm and not even the whole way in which means he didn't overdose in the sense like 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 uh Jimi hendrix where you, you you fuck up and you drown in your puke or or some fucking shit like it poisoned him to death that like what the fuck man like <sighs> okay fluid ego this is um something i've written here 
and physical consumption or exposure to one or more external beings leads to a blending of consciousness and ego. Food is the most often occurring form next to drug using. In both eating food and doing drugs or drinking, we are mixing our ego and bodily selfhood with other beings in order to strengthen us or comfort us or whatever the reason we may have. Okay? We like to think we are us all the time. I am me, you are you, and we share this beautiful world. That, however, is not the case. We are mostly us all the time, but a lot of the time we are under the influence of other forces. Our egos become fluid in nature while under the control of other egos. The ego is like a raging water hole that spills out and is filled constantly. Truly the whole is you, and the waters are the fluid ego that seek only to be reflected onto you and the world. These fluids were created to protect our core as children. As we grow, it is our job to remove and still these fluids. What we truly are is potential, and without freeing our core, our hearts, we can never truly be ourselves. We must We must push our limits of concentration and memory and all faculties of mind and body. We must strive past our very limited cave of shit, feeding off the bat shit, feeding off those weaker than us or merely struggling to find a balance between the two. The bats leave to feed and bring new fresh material to feed on we need to go beyond feeding and fucking in order to truly be unique amongst all things to be truly intelligent is to be aware of you having certain quality of life truly to be a psychonaut is a relatively lonely and arduous journey The mind, body, and soul relations are often taken for granted. Those of us who tend to analyze our behavior get a view into the world of desire, fear, and obsession. We see our fluid ego defend our habits and preferences. These, along with physical addiction, can can keep a person trapped in their own cave for a lifetime. To act without shame is the duty of all conscious beings. Those who can't remain asleep, those who can't remain asleep, or worse, a curse. Fear is the mind killer. Once freed, the mind is a doorway to untold potentials. The problem is, the mind has a hard time with the duty of acting without shame. That is a job for the heart. And in the heart is where we can realize all of our potential the door of the mind leads to the cave of dreams within the heart this dreaming from the heart is how beings express themselves in reality co-creation is the act of the many intelligences creating the one reality this works in a strange way in which a lot of dogma and confusion shroud the one consciousness limits itself while at the same time organizing progression. The tree of life pattern is the best model explaining this process. The model model was followed in the creation of worlds as well as words. Okay. So here I have a spiral and I I draw these a lot, but when I draw them, I always used to have the thought like, uh, well, here, let me just go. Thoughts and emotions arise out of the vast expanse and are gradually formed from will and desire into seemingly independent ideas that are then worked out further until they are projects being constructed or actions acted out on the material plane. Sparks of insight become grand works of art over time. So the spiral to me represents Ansoff, Ansoff, or uh, the whirling energy that spills into the tree. 
technically you could just have a spiral and then start to put things on I have an, it's an, a drawing that I have for an idea of the of the tree um, there's Kabbalistic trees that are over top of the, the earth um, like in a circle so it's like um, I think it's like zodiacal I'm not sure but imagine a spiral so if you apply the steps and um, I'll, I'll work on that ranting and roaring I'm getting ideas um, this is why I really need my buddy because I work best with people um, that's why I have to have music in the background it's give it, it, it sometimes puts thoughts in my head when I start to drift because um, I could sit here and read but, but I, I like I like videos where people are, you know, working through something, like, spontaneously, you know. Anyway, the spiral here represents the supernal triad, as well as Ansoff Orr's interpenetrating essence with relation to the Sephiroth. It is said Keither is so far beyond human intellect that truly we cannot reach it with our mind, and so in this way, it is likened to Ansoff, Ansoff, and Ansoff Orr. And and so and so forth. So in the spiral, a golden mean to be clear, we cannot see the beginning. Keither cleaves to the nothingness by being beyond our scope. Bina Kokma are the dark and light aspects of the spiral arms. One cannot be without the other. Basically, that you can see the black spiral because there's a white spiral there, and you're just saying you're seeing a white or black spiral. It's your consciousness that is picking up the information and interpreting it a certain way. Whenever it's actually both things happening. Um, so one cannot be without the other. Truly these two are to express Keither in terms. And the most basic term being point, line, plane. So as in a single point, a line, and the face okay which would be above the abyss um but that's anyway now this is not yet a 3d idea it would be termed above the abyss where a contradiction is unity you can you can have these things overlap and it would be perfectly fine above the abyss but when you try to bring certain lofty ideas down into the world the very act of them going through the abyss and entering the lower Sephiroth shatters them. Okay, that's that's why the light is divided. That's why the pure light is divided into many lights as it descends, because it's just one idea. And the higher and purer the idea, the, the more it breaks. Um, so. It would be termed above the abyss in terms of the tree of life. Um, the supernal triad is in one sense two different levels and not one supreme. As in Atsaluth, the world of the archetypes, and Briya, the world of creation. So the archetypal images that we don't necessarily have all the names for, like we, we call them names, but even if you didn't have names you have these archetypal images they lead down to the world of creation where much like adam we start to put um names to them like ideas and then you go down to yetzera where you start to add form and motion to them and then in asaya of the material world is it is just the thing being okay that it's not like these are separate things either i really don't like it when people are talking about traveling from one thing to another it's all one thing you're all within it your consciousness or your your awareness however shifts through the tree okay um anyway the four worlds five if you count adam codman divide the triad into the world of archetypes and creation. This illustrates Keither's connection to the all by showing it's a lord of archetypes. The visions of archetypes are seen, but what is seen is not the message itself, but instead evokes a deep understanding of a particular idea, but above that I have truth written. So it, these are images of truth that we then have ideas about. Okay. 
the yoni and the phallus are archetypes that allude to more than sex when viewed in their archetypal form okay from this from the stimulation from the stimulation started by a collective archetype being viewed ideas and emotions begin to arise in our understanding the idea is created in the sense that it is extracted from an archetype and has become an idea god of its own i wrote this shit so long ago i keep like trying to explain myself and then i have it written in the next sentence i'm sorry um above the abyss this idea god is pure since it is balanced by its opposite contradiction is truth beyond the abyss as this idea crosses the threshold of the void it enters yatsura the world of formation here the idea of god is made real it is defined finally by triangulation we can grasp and manipulate the idea now uh, like like we can turn it around and be like oh this is it from this angle this is this idea from this angle you know um we can it, it enters a world of motion okay that's the other thing the tree of life has lots of different interpretations if you're not familiar with the naples arrangement that crawley has um that's in the book of theros and other shit by now once you get down once you have matter um what then one of the steps is motion then um the there is a whirling to create the circles that create the pattern then that whirling shape becomes the point that point makes a line a shape a 3d shape then that shape begins to move and down here continues the same progress i'll go more into all that breakdown when it's all just about the tree a, a video all just about the tree but anyway um so it enters the world of motion, which allows growth as well as decay. Each sephira performs a process or is a screening or filter, helping, helping to define the idea more and more until it reaches the world of action. Asaya or Malkuth. Not only does the idea grow, it also interacts with each path along the way, revealing correspondences and ways it's linked to all the stages of its development. The tarot is a complex system built on this model. The use of archetypes is how multiple ideas are concealed at each step. Beyond the four world split of the tree is another method to work out more complex problems or to allow a greater number of correspondences. This is done by creating a tree for each world. So you would have descending trees like this so keither to malkuth that malkuth becomes keither and down 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 um i showed a similar tree version of it that i had made where you start at keither keither goes down that malkuth actually stays malkuth so there is no keither overlap it reverts like the clippeth that goes down again reverts on my own shadow again reverts keither but in here keither meets keither so we have um this final so one two three four worlds so one two three four trees it's just i have them flip-flop you'll you'll often see them go down and and that's um a convenience for the path working you start flipping shit around it gets confusing for for path working so um but the these trees i make are flower of life based informational systems trying to show growth and change with in the geometrical pattern of the tree itself so i'm not always trying to say that this is wrong or that's wrong it should be like this 
it's more like these are ideas that are being that are being revealed to me in the geometries. Um, anyway, I kind of go on that. So creating a tree for Malkuth of Absolute, it's Kether of Briah. Malkuth of Briah is Kether of Yetzer. Malkuth of Yetzer is Kether of Asaya. Malkuth of Asaya is the world of action. So you have this dissension, and it. It's, as opposed to just going down a few Sephiroth, it shows how far ideas come down till they finally reach mankind. Like, how, it gives you room for the heavens, the angels, the admixed, all these things. Because some people look at this, like, this is your body, too. I mean, anyway. So, so when you have multiple trees on top of each other, it's like your body within the world, within the solar system, within the galaxy, within the universe, within the cell of yourself again. And it's like this holographic thing. Keep, body keeps going out, but it's the same pattern, the same energies. Um, it's just the ride, you know. We're here for the fucking ride, guys. Just please enjoy it but you're also here to learn okay because being forgetful you we have a tendency to get mixed up in the problems of humans right now which sounds stupid because i'm a human but it's like in five years what are the problems going to be in 10 years what are the problems going to be in 30 years, what are the problems going to be? I mean, I grew up in the 80s, 90s, and the issues people talked about then compared to what the issues people talk about now, um, you just start to see the absurdity and what people like to focus on. And I know a lot of it has to do with money, and it's why I am where I am now, because I had refused to work for money. I didn't. I don't mind working. But there was a point in my life where it goes back to the girl. Like, I I knew I could have probably gotten famous, especially with her, because she was just fucking beautiful. I mean, gorgeous. She's the most beautiful. She was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen up until that point. I mean, she... And, and it wasn't because she's so beautiful. It was because I was, like, completely infatuated with her. And, like, she wanted to be, like, an actress or model or whatever. And so at the time, I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I remember going to the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors and just did not connect with her at all. Like, my, my friends and I used to go up there all the time when it was in New York at the uh, spirit club and a lot of times I'd get dropped off at her house because she lived in Philly and driving to Pennsylvania you can kind of swing down to Philly instead of going up to New York uh, but a couple one time I got her to go and um, I just kept you know that going to the chapel going to get married I just kept going through my head but when I was there with her and this was, we were having problems. Ah. Uh, anyway. After we broke up, after I found out she was cheating on me and all that shit. And it was like, well, I don't want to get. It's like a man does things to get money to attract women. It's one of the main reasons why guys have cars, jobs, all this shit. Their, their drive. To have that stuff is to please a, a woman, like a specific one, often, but sometimes it's just like hey, anybody. Please notice me, ladies. But maybe because of that, I was like, "Well, fuck money, then fuck it." Like, I don't. If if we if if I was gonna be with somebody, it was gonna be because. 
they wanted to be with me even though I was like piece of shit. I, I don't even know how to describe it without it sounding so stupid now. But it was basically like if she wants to be with the best version of me, then she's going to have to be with the worst version of me. And that's not really what I did, but these were the thoughts in my head, you know, like, uh, fuck it. You know, I, I, I just, I went to fucking Portland. That's when I shaved myself in half because I was torn. I, I really, part of me really wanted to just come back. I'm like, you know, I don't care that you cheated on me with fucking guys all year. You know, just because I need my toes to count them all. Luckily, I had a dick to get that extra one. But it's like, yeah, you, you cheat on me with, like, dozens of people, and how do I, how, how could I go back, you know? But part of me really did. Part of me was like, you know, if I just have a kid with her, which is what I was saying before about the Reaver, it felt like I was supposed to have a kid. Right? And my buddy had a kid, and um, there was problems with the girl, she wouldn't let him see him. And there was this guy, he had his name on the birth certificate. So me and Chris, uh, Chris, so we were like, fuck it. I, I want to go to Portland. We had friends going to Portland. He was like, I'll go with you. And, I, and that's the only reason I went. Like, the only reason I've ever done anything is because of Chris. And then Chris helped me meet Mike in Portland, who helped me do more stuff. He gave me a place to live. I moved out to Chicago with him at one point. Actually, he's the one that gave me the DMT, or had the DMT that I smoked. My only DMT trip I had was in Chicago. <laughs> oh shit, uh, uh, that's a video in itself. But um, yeah, it was like uh, I don't want to make money and be famous. I I burned books <laughs> that I had written, artwork, poems. I burned it so that even that part of me. That other half that wants to do stuff couldn't do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. He, he, I didn't give him a chance to, like, get famous behind my back or anything like that. I, I destroyed the work. And it used to be my first couple Mojo Ryzen rituals were in the thought that I can do this again. I've made this pattern once. I can do it again. Boys, 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 boys and girls. You cannot do it again. Even if you can do it again, the the energy and the peace that makes it special is that peace. You understand? Like when you draw something, like Alex Gray is so blessed because he has uh, the love of of a of a really good woman. Um, because it is his will to be a great painter. Okay. He, he is is decoding this um, secret world that's hidden right under our eyes and um, he has the talent the ability um, and through his work uh, that he's gone through personally he, he has the intelligence but that intelligence that will that drive are present in most all men okay not his specific talent or specific information mind you that's very unique uh i actually had a well see i feel like i read this out of either his book or ken wilber's book but it infects my mind i mean i had to have been 15 when i read it but or, or I don't know, maybe in my 20s, years ago, over 10 years ago, but there's an image of a cave, okay, and you're, cl not a cave, a mountain, and I'm climbing this mountain, and I realize the mountain is a face, and the face is made up of people I recognize, and it's like, fuck yeah, Alex, uh, Ken Wilbur, Maynard, um, Chris, like friends of mine, I, I, it's just v really fucking strange, um, and it's like I sit in the middle of this head, and the thoughts they have going in and out of, the things they see, the things they hear, the things they say, hear no, see no, speak no, reverse that, and that's what's happening, 
see all, hear all, speak all. Okay? Th these are fucking tools of the trade that are just just working in tandem with each other even if they're not in communication it's like one it, it's the new sphere the new sphere of the collective unconscious is fucking vibrating heavy on with these fuckers man and i've always felt very connected to certain people because of this like especially people that are connected to these people I mentioned. Now, this intelligence that I'm talking about is in the Hierophant card perfectly expressed. So what we have is darkness. You have the Hierophant, okay? He's sitting on the bull, slain or not. He's holding the three-ringed scepter of the new eon and before him stands the woman girt with the sword okay now i i talk a lot about soul reaver and legacy of cain because of the symbolism of the sword itself and here it's like perfectly shown that his power Okay, his, his abilities and his work is wielded by this woman. She directs the sword. He has no need to even hold the blade at this point. Okay, that's fucking Allison, man. Not only does she have her own art that is just... Mm, mm, she's wielding the intelligence of the Hierophant of, of this new eon. I mean, uh, without her, the sacred mirrors wouldn't be the way they are. Quick question. Is it... Is it wrong for me to think that there should be a fourth set of flesh, as in how the Hopi talked about it? Um, the four colors? Or... It was that left out intentionally because of the chromosomal Asian thing where it's like these they're, they're Asian they just lived here for so long um, because the Hopi have a belief that there's the four sets of mankind and that the white man I believe is fire and we were destined to either we were destined to bring the world together, and it was essentially because like, fire is the source of power of our machines, the machine that we created. Um, and in their prophecy, it was like it was either going to be peaceful and we would have found the Hopi and everybody would have worked together. Clearly, uh, it's obvious which part came, you know, what events came true and what didn't, but, um, I just always thought it was very unique, and from the very first time I ever saw the mirrors, I always wanted to say something <laughs> to Alex, uh, and, uh, but more like a question, because he does have, like, a Native American or, or a shaman there on hand, so it's definitely had to, to come up. It, it's just the thing. It's just a weird thing. Um, but I did think about it in the numbers of the mirrors. If you add the male and female, let me, let me not talk out of school here, but I believe if you add the male and the females, uh, like the, the one, two, you get a, a tarot deck of, or you get a set of cards that would match what am I even trying to say? The, the pathways. There'd be enough for the paths on the tree of light. Now, <laughs> I, I, that's not important. That's not what they are. But, it's just always something I thought about. Let's, let's not concentrate on that too long. Story time, story time gets me every time. Oh, I'm sorry. But, um, 
let's let's just end it here. So Yeah, so the whole process consists of four levels of understanding and development, often taking long cycles of progress and even vacillating amongst the Sephiroth. There is a fifth level amongst the four worlds that is the first manifested. It is known as Adam Cogman by name. And that's where I have a lot of fucking theories on like the body of life, the tree of life, the great turn that Alex just had put out. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll just make a second video because this one's really long and I don't want to fucking kill you guys with boredom anymore. Love is the law. Love under will.